Hey there, Sean here. Today I'm going to show you the two converted jabber slice I made for my Age of Sigmar rot bringers. And here's a couple of these guys, a Magoth Lord and some uh, Putrid Blight Kings for scale purposes. So you can see this guy's pretty hefty. He's on a, I don't know, the larger of the bases that like the Dracoths go on. And I was going to put them on huge bases, but it would have just been a lot of empty space. And they stand up very nicely on these. Plus, Age of Sigmar doesn't really need bases. So let's talk about the conversion work first. This is a tale from a Call of Cthulhu uh, figure from Reaper. And I used a lot of Tyranid parts. You can see a half claw, claw that's been halved here from the Harrow Specs kit. I don't know what this comes from. It's like a tongue, again, a Tyranid tongue. And there's a ton of green stuff. Uh, this is a Magoth Lord uh, head. You actually come with ex it comes with extra heads. So basically, if you can figure out the wings, and you bought a Magoth Lord, and you can figure out the wings and tail, the rest of this is just pieces that I glued together and then filled in with lots of green stuff. I have another video where you can see the the interim parts, like unpainted. So uh, I sculpted on these extra ventricles. I really like this ventricle one where he's got these little uh, sort of openings there. And uh, we're not going to talk about the coloration just yet. So basically, to get these guys to stick onto the base, I held them together. I put the cork on, roughed it up, as you can see. And then I um, held it on. And with the other hand, I put in super glue underneath it. And while that was still like in there before it ran out the other side, I put in texturing sand and it formed kind of this cement in there. And then I built, uh, I built it up a little bit with other little teeny pieces of cork that I just wedged in there. And then I did the same process on them with the sand and the super glue. And uh, this guy, and as you can see, they, they stand up really well. They're definitely on there. They didn't need any pinning or anything. You'll excuse the lighting in here. It kind of is on and off today. So anyway, uh, let's see here. So yeah, I just put in pieces like a belly plate from the Magoth Lord that was just, this is all just extras. And then uh, you've got some Moloch arms here, those tiny little Tyranid arms. But as you can see, I really roughed them up and cut them up. And I even drilled out a hole as if it was hollow there and tried to just disguise the Tyranid origins as much as possible with color and form. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, just it just all came together. This is a Venom Cannon extra piece, like the connector piece from the arm. That's actually from a Hive Tyrant kit. And on this guy, I got a Hive Tyrant flying tail with an extra hook there, the wings. This is the head from a Toxicrine. I used uh, green stuff to build up some horns. As you can see, I'm not like really g that great at green stuff, but you know, I've got kindergarten level, so with a little patience you can do that. Worked up some side pieces here to kind of bring in the continuity. This guy's definitely bigger than the other one, but and at first I thought this other guy would just be an afterthought, you know, but I've actually this guy's kind of grown on me. I think of them as a mated pair, and the madness comes from the droning of their wings. That's one of the jabber slice power is madness. And in the game, I think they are great. These are big guy killers because of the acid blood ability. So I tried to carry that narrative over into their form by creating, I just took the butt of a brush, wetted it, stuck it in the green stuff to create like a, a socket, and then I put a little balled up piece of green stuff in there with super glue. And that's, that's how I created all these extra little pustules on them. And you can do the same thing on the hard parts with a Dremel, just by drilling out a hole and then sticking a little ball in there. And these are Haru Specs mouthpieces, again, from the Tyranids. But they look really great on this guy. They definitely look really weird and Cthulhu-esque. And you've got some Hive Tyrant lash whips. I took two of them, put them at different angles, hopefully to make them look a little bit different, one longer than the other. And if you, the, for me, the narrative, because I like to think, you know, well, how is this, mod, how is this guy actually moving? Over here, the two claw pieces had thumb ports which I drilled out and out of one of them you can't really see it gets lost in the green stuff but there's a like a tentacle that comes out of one and then this one there's just like the tip of a thing of a spike 
So supposedly he has two of these that like go in and out for whatever reason to like grab people or whatever out of its back. So really, I just tried to make them into these weird, freaky, nightmare creatures. Each one very unique. And, you know, they, they, are, they are really just extremely gross. And the, the top feature really is the Magoth Warhead. But with the extra pieces, the gut plate, the side arm pieces and whatnot, it really, it really brings that pattern and feeling over the entire model with what I did of, like, drilling out and creating, like, green stuff, pustules and stuff. It makes it look, I think, like one cohesive piece. And, of course, from the Harpy kit, I put in these tails. Actually, I think those are Haro Specs jaws. My bad. So, anyway, and then again, green stuff, glue, a lot of different things going on there. Uh, made these into these really cool pieces, I think. And again, excuse the lighting, it's, it's, this is like a golden hour, which turns this room into a giant light box, but for some reason I've got some cloud cover. Okay, anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's talk about the Vallejo colors that I use. That's the brand I prefer. I like the droppers. It's a good quality. They're generally available everywhere. So you can get good consistency. So what I did is I put down a black primer and then I took a what's called a red primer, but it's actually more of a brownish red. And I did a two-tone on that by just making the brown primer not color cover everything. I just did it from above. And so that was the start. Then I lightly dry brushed the whole thing with pale sand to create kind of this, uh, this uh, sort of glowing look to it. The very stark contrast. And that's a good base to start in on the other uh, color. So once that was really dry, I put khaki on all the skin areas and uh, on the tail. Uh, really almost everywhere. You can't go wrong with the khaki base. And it gives it sort of that sickly flesh color. And it also drew, it makes them look like they kind of go with this army. Although you'll notice with these guys I made an actual sort of whitehead type ivory pustule thing. And on these guys it's a yellowish ochre. Uh, which I think is called, I use two types of brown. One's called parasite brown, the other is called like parasitic brown. But one is yellow and one is more of a brownish color, like an ochre. Ochre brown is a big fa a big uh, favorite of mine. So anyway, then what I did is I took a purple wash and I put it over a lot of the skin. In fact, almost all the skin. So if you look at it, it, and that's what I think gives the skin this sort of natural color to it that looks like it's, act it's actually going to be squishy when you touch it. Uh, so a lot of purple wash, and it looks like a lot when you do it, it's like, bye, put on too much purple. But if you just have some faith and let it dry, it creates like these really, pur you see it more on this guy, purplish sort of sub areas. And then I did the same thing with red, but I only went around like where the pustules are. And I didn't pick out all of them. As you can see, he has a lot of them on him, but I, I want it to be very sparse. And to me, because of the acid blood thing, I imagine this is bile. These are like bile-filled tumors that the warriors like. If they hit them, they get showered in it and like eats them alive. And if, if they kill the creature, it just bursts open and the wings are still uh, fluttering madly and just showering acidic goo all over everybody. Yuck. Totally gross. So anyway, again, while that was still wet, I put on the wash of, of red there. And then I went and I did black. And black is for the horns. Now, uh, for these things, I wanted them to still look articulated. Normally, traditional painting is... And by the way, I know this, my paint jobs aren't really that amazing. I just use, I use basic techniques, and I do them, I do them pretty quick. Uh, so, just so you know, I'm not bragging on some, you know, competition quality here. So, anyway, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, so I put black on all the horns. And then uh, what I did is I did a red wash, and you can't even see it, but it is subtly there. The red goes into the cracks, and I think it gives it sort of this organic feel to it. And then I dry brushed on black gray, and then finally on the horns, I put on somber gray, which is a, is a bluish gray. Games Workshop is called Space Wolf Gray. And I just barely highlighted up the edges here. Not very much. I didn't want these guys to look bright. So you can definitely see it here. And you can see it on these like claw pieces there. So it's a bluish gray. So you do have a little bit of blue on these guys. It definitely gives them this cold bug-like feel to them, which I absolutely love. 
And then I just dry brushed purple, dry brushed some Warlord purple kind of into the crevices to give it sort of that more bright look. And that, that was kind of the off piece that on the jabber slice that my regular Nurgle guys do not have those colors on them. And then I just mixed ivory into the purple and I put these little dots along the veins. And that's what I think gave them this sort of weird deep sea creature look to them. I definitely like that pattern. <clears throat> Going to use it for other things for sure. So now it's dried like red uh, on these areas here. So I hit it with another khaki dry brush just to kind of bring that out again because it's really been washed down by then. And then it's it's home free. I, I put solid black on all the on all the spines and usually people are like oh spines should be bone no way man make them black like on this guy and i think in nature you'll find a lot of that too that horns are actually this very dark color they are not ivory colored well not always you know just take everything i say with a grain of salt i guess so anyway i just put straight up black on all the horns some of them i hit it with a little dry brush of somber gray again just for a highlight uh, especially on their teeth. I really thought their teeth needed a highlight to stand out. Uh, on here I just have some, mil I just played with the tongues a little bit. I've got some military green, Russian green in this case. On this guy I just did uh, like this pretty heavy purple wash, a black wash. While it was still wet I worked on the ochre. And again, because they have bile inside them, I worked this ochre brown into there. I just stippled it, I just kind of crammed it in there. And it got sort of this natural effect. I think like actually you know goop, they're full of the, like this goop and uh, dry brushed a little warlord purple under the tentacles to make them all freaky and <clears throat> what else that's basically just dots of like the ochre yellow color I can't remember what it's called exactly but uh, definitely love that did not put any true yellow on these guys it's, it's only this brownish yellow and uh, again on their on their tails I did that little dot of that very light purple on them which is a combination of pale sand and and purple so guys I had a great time painting assembling and painting these guys and I have to tell you these two pieces actually took longer to assemble and paint than the entire rest of the army did because of all the the custom stuff and all the love that went into them so I fell into the miniature painters trap there of, of of uh, just losing track of time and just putting just putting the love in. So there you go. Two Jabber Slice for Age of Sigmar. And I'm very pleased with how they turned out. I think they're going to be fun to play. And I want to thank you for tuning in and taking a look at some of my stuff.